I am so proud of myself for what may sound like the dumbest thing. For like a masochist, it's a big deal. So the other day I was walking with my friend and we were on like a long walk, like a few miles or something. Talking, catching up. And I noticed I had a rock in my shoe. Now for a good 15 minutes, I just kept readjusting to the rock being in my shoe. You know, I kept flipping my foot so the rock would you know, roll to the front of my shoe. And I just, I literally just kept adjusting to this rock in my shoe. And then I was like, wait, wait, wait. That's old behavior. What was I supposed to do? Oh, right. Stop and take the rock out of my shoe. Now, I know that, like, I've used this before, and I think a lot of people use this metaphor of, like, a rock in the shoe, and this is, like, people who have, usually who have, like, childhood trauma or something where they're just, like, overly adaptive to pain. Um, and I am so much, so much so that I don't know what to do when I don't have some sort of, like, pain to do gymnastics around. That's one reason why I did really intense outdoor sports. I mean, my idea of fun was going climbing and scaring the crap out of myself and being in a lot of physical pain so that on the other end of that, I could be very proud of myself because it builds character and it makes me feel strong and all that stuff. And it does, it does, there's no denying that. No shame in my choices to be a climber because it did give me all kinds of confidence and great experiences and connection to my body and all this stuff, right? And it's also a way to avoid dealing with your crap. It's a way to avoid what that thing that's often behind it, that's pushing that, that pushes it to the extreme, which is dealing with some sort of trauma. By the way, it's almost October and it's so hot I had to come to the river. We don't have air conditioning. <laughs> In France, nobody has air conditioning. Okay, some people do, but most don't. So this is where I'm working today. Not. And there's a guy over there who I'm sure is going to come and try to hit on me any second now. Oh wait, there's one behind me too. Love being a woman! So anyway, when I stopped, or when I slowed down these extreme sports that I was doing, like climbing and all that stuff, and I moved to New York and, cre and pursued my creative dreams, um, you know, I wasn't in this like fight or flight, you know, like survival state of mind anymore. I actually had an apartment, which I literally never unpacked it. I was living out of Tupperware containers inside an apartment for years because being in my body, being in my home, being settled is a very uncomfortable experience for me. And now I know why it's traced back to stuff that happened in the home. But when I started pursuing creative stuff instead of these hardcore sports that like had me literally scared for my life all the time, um, shocker, a lot of trauma came up. And so since then, I mean, this has been like, I don't even know how many years, like 15 years or more I've been dealing with this stuff, unlearning these, this way of thinking. And one of the things, and this is what scares me, is I'm afraid that if I ever get like, some, have a chronic illness, I'll never deal with it because I don't even notice pain. I'm so used to pain. I'm so comfortable with pain. I don't even notice it. I just adapt. And so the other day, I was actually really proud of myself for noticing there's something causing my foot pain. It's a tiny rock. And my friend is not going to mind me stopping and taking it out. And so when I talk about centering my, my, myself as a, as, a, as a, you know, chronic codependent, it's even on that level. It is, it's ridiculous how much I'm just like, who, who, I don't want to upset anybody. You know, I don't want to inconvenience them for three seconds because, you know, we have to stop and he has to wait for three seconds for me to take a, a rock out of my shoe. It's absurd when you think about it. It's pretty funny. Thank God, I have a sense of humor, which is also a trauma response because the, the way that my mind thinks is just bonkers. Having to ask myself on a regular basis, wait, are you in pain somewhere? You know, like, how are you feeling, Melanie? What are you thinking? What do you want? It is so not my default to actually be in my body, be in touch with how I feel physically, emotionally, you know, in any way, because I'm just so hyper vigilant with the thermometer up everyone else's butt. And that's another reason why if you don't heal this stuff, it will, it will literally take years off of your life because it'll have us avoiding really important doctor's appointments. When climbers and mountaineers and you know, any, any people in extreme sports who physically use their body a lot, when those people get injured, and especially if they're men, they become unbelievably self-destructive and oftentimes, um, trigger warning, schmooicidal. They are a mess because without that pain and that focus on something else to avoid our past, to avoid how we feel, to avoid processing things, we don't know what to do. So stopping and getting the rocks out of my shoe, whether it's an actual rock or a metaphor, 
I'm hoping will lead to a much more peaceful life because just being constantly in stress and yet also gaslighting myself and being like, no, there's no pain there. There's no stress there. It's fine. It's fine. Just adapt. 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 Being adaptable is an unbelievable survival mechanism. It's what made me so good at so many jobs. It's why I've had such a great life, but it's also a liability. And in the long run, it'll actually get you killed. No more walking around with rocks in your shoes. Because as my um, therapist said, a part of my healing is, is not being in denial, not denying the truth. I had to do it as a kid, but as an adult, it's not serving me anymore. Stop adapting to the rock and remove it. Life is so much better when you're not adjusting to a pain.